<laughs> I started my Facebook Live and realized that it was private. So no one could actually see it, um, <laughs> which, which was actually pretty bad. I'm like, wait, what do you mean? And then I realized nobody could see it. So I had to go and, um, I had to go and fix that. Uh, so I apologize in, not in advance, it already happened. But yeah, crap happened. Things happen, people. It's called tech. It's called technical issues. Anyway, let's do this one more again. All right. So anyway, I was talking about, I put this post that F-O-N, the fear of networking and, and the fear that really almost cost me my business and how that fear is not only real, but it's really real. How it could really derail you and it could really derail your business so <laughs> i swear i was on earlier but i had it on private so no one could see it and i didn't realize it until ramon ray hit me up and he goes are you on facebook live and i'm like yeah and he goes well, i can't find you and i'm like really let me tag you and then i realized i didn't make it public so everyone couldn't see me my bad all right so this is my favorite my, I asked you guys, I put out there that first of all, FON was real and how it almost destroyed my business. And here's my favorite thing. You guys took this up as a challenge. You were like, what the hell is FON? Even though it was not a challenge, I, I went in thinking that everybody knew what it was. So here we go. My favorite one was April Lewis was like, what is FON? Thinking of fuck off. No, it wasn't anything bad words. Um, fear of, which was good. People with fear of negativity. That was a big one. Um, Kevin wrote focusing or farting. I don't know why we were flatulent, but that wasn't it. Um, Gregory Offner said it was freakishly oversized nails. A little gross. Ugh. Okay. It's not that Greg. That's just gross. Um, uh, Kevin says focusing on new growth. Why would I be scared of focusing on new growth? That's so cute. Um, Lisa said fear of networking. Some people do have that. That is a real one. And actually, I started off thinking about that, but that's not it. Uh, let's see. Fear of no. That is really close because there are a lot of people, Polly, who are absolutely afraid of growth, right? That is a true fear for them. Joel say a fear of nothing. Well, of course, Joel, because you're the man. So what else would you think? Um, somebody said I was epic. And then Carol said focusing on no. Um, Don Marie said, no, no, Donna is way more deeper and profound than that. Therefore, it must be F represents something like funnels, formulas, focus, or facts. I think FN is focusing on numbers. That is about people. I'm not that profound, boo. I love you. I'm just not that deep. Um, <laughs> not. The only person who got it right was actually Lisa Lorette Young, who just joined us. And the answer was fear of negotiating. Fear of negotiating, which is the right answer. And this is a real fear. In fact, some people actually get pissed off if they are required to negotiate because I was just talking to Elizabeth. Uh, she's a family member and Elizabeth said, I, look, I feel like I gave somebody a fair price. I don't understand why I have to negotiate. You know, unfortunately, negotiating is real. We actually do have to negotiate, right? So let's talk about this fear, why it is such a real fear. I want to stop talking. Um, it is a real fear. People do have it. Um, negotiating is, is terrifying for a lot of people. I am not only going to tell you why this was a big fear, why it was kind of stupid that I had a fear of negotiating since I had been coached by an, an FBI negotiator and <laughs> she got the prize. She got the prize. Trust me. Um, cause she knows already how she going to get the prize. It's she going to go on my calendar and she's going to say, I need 850,000 hours with you. Anyway, we're going to talk today a bit about Seriously, the fear of negotiating, why that fear is so real, because it is so real. We're going to talk a tiny bit about some negotiation strategies so that it's not so scary for you. That's number two. And then number three, some of the ways, um, some of the things that you should think about, just the negotiating mindset. So that way you can kind of not making make it feel so negotiating 
feeling that you actually realize that what you're doing is creating an opportunity. So what's up, man? How are you doing from Egypt? It's so good to see you. Jerasi, what's up, baby? It's great to see you. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Who the heck is she? My name is Donna St. Louis. I am CEO of HighProfitZone.com. So you can just go to HighProfitZone.com. And at HighProfitZone.com, we turn experts, experts into high profit entrepreneurs. And if you want to jump on time and have a conversation with me, if you're like, no, no, I think I can deal with her brand of crazy for about an hour, just go to coffee with dot donna dot com coffee with dot donna dot com and if that doesn't work with you just go to donna dot com and click on there's a a link all the way at the top and i think it says uh have a call with donna or set up a meeting or something like that anyway um and if you don't know how to spell my name then you probably shouldn't be on here so no f-o-n is a real thing people have it um they run into it all the time oh last thing our next High Profit Zone program, our 10-week program, is starting uh, right now. The last person can get in the middle of September. So you literally have only one month to get in. If you are an NSA member, if you are at the NSA um, thing uh, conference, you get a discount, which is only good for this month. You also get a different payment plan. However, you have to reach out to me as soon as possible if you want to turn your business, if you want clarity in that business, if you want to get over failure, if you want to really start making money, you have to get in contact with me as soon as possible by going to coffeewith.donna.com. The, ne the next program is starting. The big multi-million dollar mansion retreat happens in November, but that's only after you go through the program. Thank you. It was called Influence 2019. That was the name of the conference. Damn it, I knew you were with me, family. All right. So let's talk about this fear of negotiating. I thought it was kind of funny because my friend hit me up and he goes, how did you have a fear of negotiating? You were actually trained by an FBI hostage negotiator to learn how to negotiate. Yes, I had the skill, but when I got into the business, there were two things I didn't know. Number one, how open my client or the person that I was talking to, how open my target was to open to negotiation because I was afraid that I was going to lose the deal. Here's the other big number two. I didn't know what I could negotiate or how to negotiate. Not how from a skill, but what were some of the things that I could negotiate. I didn't have a good list of those things. I didn't even really know um, how to, to step into the negotiation arena. And what, it, what happens is the, the worst negotiation that you're ever in is a negotiation that you don't know you're in. And so what happens generally is when people are calling you and they're ready to start talking about money, they're already negotiating. From the point that they start talking about money, they're negotiating. And the question is, are you going to be on the losing end of that negotiation or on the winning end of that negotiation? So it, it feels funny. Some people get insulted, by the way, by negotiation. They'll say, you know what? I feel like I gave them a fair price. So... I don't understand why we're even having a, a negotiation. Well, quite honestly, the reason you're having that negotiation is because they really like you. They really want you for their, their audience. They really think you're perfect. But unfortunately, they don't necessarily have the budget. It's just not in their dollars. And if it is in their dollars, because it might be there, they don't know how to find it. So if you really think about a negotiate, and, and if you don't negotiate, so you're like, so how did fear of negotiation impact your business? Here's how it impacted my business. So I remember doing the speaking engagement and the guy next to me was horrible. He showed up on stage late. He got off on off a of stage early. He cursed like throughout his presentation and he just did a really bad job. And yet they gave him $15,000. I got like $500 and a stale chicken dinner and had to pay for my flight, right? I can't be mad at him. I got to be mad at me. I did a bad job in negotiating. I can't be a bad mad at the event planner. The event planner saw it would take 500 bucks and I took $500, right? And so a fear of negotiating will cause you to 
lower your value. It will cause other people to see you as not valuable because of course, what did that event planner do? That event planner told other event planners, no, she's only like 500 bucks. You know, so the other event planner in the audience walked over to the first event planner and was like, oh my God, Donna was awesome. Do you mind me asking how much? And she said $500 and a chicken dinner. Oh, and she paid for her own hotel and her travel child. She's doing this for free, basically. Of course I got booked because I was getting booked because people were like, if you see an idiot, bump them on the head. They saw an idiot, they bumped me on the head. I mean, it's still business, so let's talk about how to do this. So you get someone on the phone and they're ready to have a conversation and your fee is your fee, whatever it is. So let's just use a number right now. Let's use a number that some people might be uncomfortable with. So I want, to, I want you to imagine that somebody wants you to come and share your expertise with them and they want you to share your expertise with them for an hour. And your fee is $15,000 for one hour to share your expertise. Ready? They're gonna ask you a question. How much do you charge? Now don't lie, don't bullshit. How many of you answer like this? I charge $15,000. Silence. How many of you answer like this? I charge $15,000, but I can make like, I can, like if your budget is lower, I could work with you. How many of you discount your rate before they ask for a discount? How many times does it say, and be honest if that's what you're doing, like just own it, like that's what you're doing. How many of you go, um, well, it's according to what you want. Like, I wanna know how much you charge for a keynote. Well, um, um, well, it's according to who's gonna be in the room. Um, and how many people are in the audience? And is it gonna be on a Wednesday? <laughs> right. How many of you are so uncomfortable saying $15,000 and shutting up? I mean, be honest. If, you're, if this makes you uncomfortable, if saying $15,000 and then shutting up makes you feel like they're gonna walk away from the deal, seriously, honestly, give me hearts. Because if you don't give me hearts, if I don't know that this is you, then I'm going to move on and not tell you how to get over that. Because I'm not going to solve a problem that you're not having. So if this makes you uncomfortable, $15,000, and then you don't say anything, and the fact that you don't say anything means that they can just hang up the phone and keep going. If, the, if that whole process makes you a little uncomfortable, give me some love. If I don't see any love, I'm going to keep going. I'm keep going if I... I'm not going to say anything. Four, three, two, one. Okay, so nobody's having this problem. So why am I even talking about it? You guys aren't having this issue. You can charge $15,000. You don't even care. You're good to go. All right. Then I won't tell you what to do next and to get over that challenge. So let's keep going. So now that you got them on the phone, you've told them your rate, you're comfortable with that. You can say $15,000 to stop talking, which by the way, by the way, most people, if they're true, like Lisa's like, no, I'm putting hearts. How do I put hearts? She's probably sitting there. I don't know how to put the hearts. How do I put the hearts? I know that's what she's doing right now. Um, okay, so Lisa, since you were honest enough to say the hearts, this is what you have to do to really get over that. When somebody says, I thank you, Carol. When somebody says, how, you know, how much do you charge? And you say $15,000 and then you feel uncomfortable because a lot of times, you should feel uncomfortable, by the way. If you're saying your rate and you don't feel a little bit uncomfortable at your rate, then you're probably not charging enough. You need to say your rate and have an oh shit moment. You should be like, $15,000, oh my God, 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 oh my God. That's what should happen. Like you should have to dance through it just a little bit. If you say your rate and you're like cool with it, and you're like, yeah, fifteen thousand dollars would. Then that means you're not charging enough. You're probably leaving money on the table. What's up, April? So you really want to have 
You want to throw up a little bit in the garbage can after you say your weight. You want to feel a little sick. You want it to be a little higher than you're, than they're expecting it to be. If you're saying $15,000 and you're cool with it, you're leaving a shit ton of money on the table. You need to have that feeling in the pit of your stomach. Why? Why? Because if not, there's money literally being left on the table. So we got to change that attitude. So yes, your rate should be a little higher than, than what you're comfortable with. That's exactly what you should be looking like, Lisa. That's number one. All right. Number two, how do you say $15,000? If that's your rate, they say, what's your rate? How do you say $15,000 and stop talking? Easy. Put a lollipop in your mouth. Literally, $15,000 lollipop in your mouth. Put a sour lollipop in your mouth and you really won't say anything. $15,000 lollipop. Because he who speaks first loses. $15,000 lollipop, you're done. Now, when they say, ooh, Don, I know we've talked about value. You've already had the value conversation by the time, by the time you get to this. If you haven't had the value conversation yet, if you haven't done a bat signal yet, and if you're sitting here going, I don't even know what the bat signal is, then you should be at my program. But if you haven't bat signaled them yet, if you haven't had the value proposition conversation, if you don't understand what exact solution that you're delivering to them, then I don't even know why you're talking about money. But if you're, but you are past that point, you're now talking about money. And by the way, if you don't know anything, I'm talking, go and watch the last two videos. Okay. So we now, whoosh, who. Ooh, child, God bless my $15,000 day. Girl. Now, you know you're a $15,000 speaker. I've seen you. Anyway, so we got to do this. So now you're, you have the conversation at $15,000 and then you shut the hell up. That's what you do. You say your price, you shut the hell up. Done. They're going to come back and say one of two things. Great. That's awesome which by the way sucks, or B, that's a little higher than our budget. If they say, great, that's awesome, you just left money on the table. Because you said 15 and they're like, shit, I had 20. They came in at 15, this is awesome. Yeah, you just left money on the table. So you want them to say, that's a little bit over our budget. Okay, what's your budget? Now, normally I hear this. Well, what can you do? Oh, I can do $15,000. <laughs> That's what I can do. What can you do? Right? And a lot of times when somebody asks me my budget, I'll say, my keynote, well, my keynote isn't 15, but my keynote is 20, but I'll say, you know, my keynote is 15,000. Where's your budget? I just go straight and ask. My, my keynote is 15, where's your budget? That's it. Now, once they say, I, what did you do, Carol? What did you do? Now, once they say, okay, that's a little bit over our budget, then they say, okay, so where are you? Where is your budget? And let's say they come back and go, well, what can you do? I can, well, we've already talked about what I can do. I can do 15. So what we need to figure out is where you are so that we know the delta so that we can bridge the path. What they wanna know is that there is a a gap that there, that can be bridged. I've had people that have called me and literally said, I am actually too embarrassed to tell you what our budget is. I've had that conversation. I am too embarrassed to tell you what our budget is. I'm going to tell you a secret and I hope no event planner is watching this right now. Um, I'm, I'm going to see if I have one over here that I can show you. Uh, no, I don't have a paper. I, so I'm going to tell you, um, I know Carol needs to speak up. I'm going to tell you, I've had event planners tell me that they were too embarrassed to tell me what their budget was. I got to be honest, 90% of the time, because they said that I said, I don't care what your budget is. We're going to work together. And here's why. I reward testicular fortitude and ovarian audacity. I reward people who say, I really want you and I can't afford you. And I'm like, baby, you just stroked the hell up out of my ego. What do you want? We gonna work together. I work with somebody who loves me every day over somebody who got dollars that I can't stand. 
tell you God's honest truth because I got enough clients that are paying me the dollars. So, so what I do with those clients is I go, well, let's talk about it. So now you have this number where you have to bridge the gap, right? You have to bridge the gap between where you are and where they, where you are and where they are. I got to find my glasses because I really got to see what the hell Carol did. Carol said, quoted $30,000 and the response was, well, that's got to be part-time work. You just can't make that for the year. I know. I know. You got lucky with that one, Carol. We talked about this negotiation. She quoted $30,000 for the year and then they were like, oh, that's got to just be six months. And then she's like, yes, no, of course it's for this. It's for our entry level program. I'm glad we winged it though. Like she and I had this conversation and she totally winged it. I was very proud of her. Anyway, no, I love a client who will who'll be honest and truthful with me. I 100% reward people who are vulnerable, who are honest, who are um, um, truthful with me, who will come to me and say, you know what, I really want you. I'm a little bit embarrassed about our budget. We haven't done this before. And I just, you know, sticker shock. I wasn't prepared. All right, so now we've gotten past that. So let's say, for example, you're at 15 and they're at 10,000. There is a $5,000 delta. There were There is a $5,000 delta. So this is what you do when that happens. You say, okay, great. You never go, you never go like this. Let me tell you what not to do. All right, okay, I'm 15,000. How much is your budget? Oh, we're at 10. 10? 10? What the hell? Do I look like I'm, I'm working a street corner? No, no, we're not doing 10. Have you lost your mind? 10? Jesus Christ. I'm going to be on welfare working for 10. 10 ain't shit. You can't, do not embarrass them about their budget. They already feel pretty embarrassed. Don't then sit there and make them sound like their budget is the worst budget on the face of the earth. Don't make it seem like, Lord, I'm going to be eating government cheese for the rest of the year. This woman said 10. Don't do that. Do not do that at all. Instead, what you actually want to do is go, great. Why is it great? Because you're actually talking to someone who knows the damn budget. You won't believe how many people I get on the phone with. They go, I have no idea what my budget is. So you shopping at Neiman Marcus? Not only without a Walmart credit card, but without a credit card at all? What do you do? Oh, you window shopping? Boo, you in the wrong spot to window shop. And I tell people, by the way, when they say they don't have a budget, I say, well, have you ever hired a... I don't have a budget. Have you ever hired a professional speaker before? No. I said, okay, let me introduce you to something I like to call sticker shock. Um, speakers aren't as cheap as you think they are. And if they're cheap, they're not good. And if they're good, they're not cheap. So we want to make sure... We want to make sure that you're getting somebody who is up to the level of your audience. Now, to do that, you have to recognize that a level nine or 10 speaker is probably making about 15 or $20,000. What's the level of the people in your audience? What do you mean the level of the people in the audience? Well, do you have people who in your audience who show up and they're just like ones, twos, or threes? Like they don't want to be there and you force them to be there? Do you have people that show up in your audience that are like right there in the middle? They're four, fives, and sixes. They want to be there. You know, it, it's still a part of the job, but you know, they're going to get something out of it. Or do you have people that show up in your office audience and they're like, you know, six, sevens, eights. You have a couple of nine sprinkles in. These people are rock stars. They really show off for your association. They come up and they bring it up and they bring it in. Which one of those are you? Do you are, are in your audience ones, twos, and threes, four, fives, and sixes, or you know, six, sevens, eight with some nine sprinkle in? They usually go, We usually have six, seven, eights with some nine sprinkle in. Okay, so you're telling me you have the best of the best of your organization in the room, and yet you have a budget for a speaker that's a one, two, or three? Why would you put a one, two, or three expert in front of an audience that's filled with seven, eights, and nines? Why wouldn't you take a level nine or 10 speaker and put in front of your level one, two, and three audience and bring them up? Or even more so, why wouldn't you get a level four, five, or six speaker for your, for your audience? Like, why would you do that? Why would you put a level one, two, or three speaker for a seven, eight, or nine audience? You need to make sure that 
you have the amazing person at the top. Hey, I didn't say, so hold on, back up. I did not say new and good. I said cheap. If they're cheap, they're probably not that good. And if they're good, they're probably not that cheap. You could be new and not cheap. I don't have a single person coming out of HBZ that's charging less than 10 grand. They could be new. They're not cheap. Anyway, what you want to do is you want to leverage a strategy that helps them identify the level of their audience so they can identify the level of their speaker. We actually do this in High Profit Zone. When we go through High Profit Zone, we go, hold on, what level of audience are you speaking to and what level of expert are you? We want to make sure that we have a top expert in front of the people they should be in front of. If you're a level one, two, and three speaker, you get in front of an audience of four, five, sixes through nines, they're going to eat you alive. They're going to hate you. So you want to make sure that you're showing up as a top expert. So I ask, that's one of my negotiation strategies. Are you, do you have audience members that are rock stars that are showing up? Most people go, well, yeah, of course, our association has rock stars. Okay, if your association has rock stars that are showing up, then why wouldn't you put a rock star in front of them? And let me just give you some numbers. For every point, for every point from one to 10, well, from one to nine is about $2,000. 2,000, maybe even 2,500. A level one speaker is gonna be zero to 2,500. A level two speaker is gonna be up to 5,000. A level three speaker is gonna be up to 7,500. A level four speaker, and you just keep going up, right? And then I tell them there's a scale where it does level out, but at the end of the day, that's where you're talking about. By the time you get to a level nine, you're looking at an $18,000 above speaker. I am a $20,000 speaker. So therefore, if you're telling me that your audience is seven, eights, and nines, then you want a $20,000 speaker. That's where your budget should be. So I just want to introduce you to Sticker Shop. So when you go shopping for a speaker, their rate can literally let you know where they are within their industry in regards to their budget. There are very few people who are expert entrepreneurs who've actually made a whole bunch of money and expert persuasion and influence people who are earning, that are worth their salt, who are earning less than me. They're very few. I mean, like, not that are worth their salt. They're doing 20, 24, 22. If they're doing influence and they're doing persuasion and they're doing entrepreneurship, I'm actually probably a deal. And that's only because I'm not famous. But I go up against Gary Vaynerchuk, Damon John, Grant Cardone every day. And I can tell you right now, Gary Vaynerchuk is 50 grand because he's famous, not because he's better than me. So that's the thing that you have to know. You first have to know what, right? I love you, Lindy. I love you. Um, what you have to do is you have to recognize what level speaker you are so you can negotiate from that perspective. If you don't know your level, it is really, really, really hard to negotiate that. So make sure that you're negotiating that. Yes, he is famous. He's not very good. He doesn't have a methodology, which I do. Okay, so that's number one. Here's your big number two. Your number two is when you negotiate, you now have a delta. So they said, hey, Donna, I love you, like seriously. And I can, there are lots of things that, that I can do. Um, you're at 15, for example. I'm not at 15 again, I'm at 20, but we're using it for example. You're at 15, I'm over here at 10. It's not gonna work out. And I go, well, hold on, maybe it will. We have a bridge to, to gap, right? We got a $5,000 Delta. Let's talk about how we can bridge that Delta. You as an expert need to have a list of things that you want. This is, in, this is critical. You need to have a list of things that you want. So what are some of the things that you need for your business? So for, and, and by the way, I don't be like, I need a new desk. That's not, what I'm, that's not what I'm talking about. So let's say, for example, you're like, you know what? I need video. I need photography. I need testimonials. 
I need a few written recommendations. Let's just start there. There are other negotiation things. We'll talk about those in a second, but let's just start with the basics. Okay, how much is great video worth to you? And I don't mean video that you're gonna get edited in 10 years later. I mean, you're gonna get off the stage and the cameraman is gonna track you down and they're gonna be like, Miss Lewis, Miss Lewis, here go your video. That, that's what I'm talking about. They got that video on a hard drive. They are chasing your ass down the road. What are those things that are valuable to you and your organization that you can use? And how much is it worth? Great video for me is worth a grand. You gonna give me some great video? I'm gonna get off the stage, he's gonna track me down and give me video? Oh my God, don't have a three camera shoot. You gonna give me a three camera shoot? What? Okay, we just, we just, we just minus a thousand dollars. Let's take a thousand dollars. So now we got a four thousand dollar gap. And then they'll be like, you gonna have a photographer? Well, if you got a videographer there, you gotta have a photographer there. Are you gonna have a photographer there? Really? Okay, so I need a photographer for two reasons. The first reason is I need a photographer to take live shots. I'm gonna give that photographer a shot list. If I give him a shot list, do you think he can ensure that I get gr that he gets great pictures of me? Now, if he only does it while I'm speaking, that's worth $500. If he follows me around on the day that I'm speaking, like before I, you know, before I go in, while I'm getting set up, once I get off stage, and then while I'm talking to people, to me, that's worth $1,000. But you know what's worth a couple of thousand dollars to me? $2,000? If the night before when the stage and everything is set up, if we can do a straight up dress rehearsal where I could change clothes and I can do a full dress photo, photo session and then we can even, I can change clothes and I can do another photo session where I'm on stage and he's got pictures of me and I got the black background and I got my slide up and I can actually pose a little bit and he's got me like, like if I can get a photo shoot the night before full dress rehearsal, as well as he's gonna shoot me then, as well as he's gonna follow me just a little bit around. If I can get that along with him editing some key photos for me and headshots, are you kidding me? That's worth two grand to me. All of a sudden, we now have video <laughs> and we have amazing photography. We got $3,000 worth of stuff. See, the thing is y'all are sleeping on this, but let me tell you something about video and photography. Video and photography on a day that I done got up and I done purposely put on my face and I done purposely did my hair and I purposely have on my outfit and I purposely have this great stage and I purposely have this great audience and everything that I'm doing right now is purposeful and in the moment and my energy is up. So my picture is going to be on point like that. You cannot pay for that with a videographer that you're going to meet on Wednesday. You can't pay for that level of excitement that your body brings up. You can't pay for that. That you get because you're excited to be there in the moment with the people. You're there with a professional that's going to catch you on stage. Are you kidding me? You can't pay for that. And look, I love all y'all. There's not one of y'all on here that is an Oscar award winning actress that can fake those pictures well enough to make me believe them because it shows here in your eyes. Trust me, I used to model. What you really need is while you're there in that moment that you get those real popping pictures. People always ask me about my pictures on my website, even though some of them look like shit right now because they're furry, but fuzzy, but it's because they're live. They're in the moment. They're real. So people are like, it looks like you're really laughing. That's because I'm really laughing. I'm really laughing. It's a real picture, right? You cannot pay enough for that. So you just bridge the gap between $5,000 and $10,000 by $3,000. Let me tell you where you going where you going to do them a favor and get you and give them a $1,500 discount. Here's your next one. When I get off the stage and I've done a fantastic job and you're sitting here going, "Who? Oh my god, Donna. Girl, you lit it up. For real, for real, for real, you lit it up." And I'm going to go, "Great." What you're going to do now is you're going to give me three recommendations, the three decision, three, excuse me, three decision makers of three associations who you think would be that I would be absolutely perfect for. 
In fact, before we even get to that point, I'm going to ask you questions about those associations. You're going to send an email before I ever get on the stage and you're going to go, hey, D, I want to introduce you to this person who is an event planner and, and decision maker. And I'm going to tell them, I'm going to make that introduction now. And then afterwards, I'm going to tell them how awesome you are. The reason this is important is because if they do it ahead of time, after I get off stage, I'm going to take some of those pictures from that photographer. I'm going to include them in that thing. And I'm going to send a letter to the event planner and that person and say, oh my God, it was a fantastic time. Here are some pictures. And you know what? I'm going to CC those other people that they were recommending me to. And they're going to reply and kind of say, girl, you was on fire. Oh my God. People are still talking about you. People always say, well, Donna, how do you get that recommendation? You pre get that recommendation. You don't get it after the fact. You get it ahead of time. Boom. We are now at $4,500. And you're like, girl, where the extra um, $500 coming from? I got you. Mind you, we still haven't talked about it in the back of the room sales. We still haven't talked about book sales, all the other places you can make money. Here's where you're going to get your extra money. Ready? You're going to tell them if you reserve the date in full in the next seven days, which means you are going to pay me my full fee within the next seven days, I will give you a 6% discount. They now just save $600. You just got all your money in seven days. You're not waiting six months for the event. You just got it all that day. Those are some of the things that you can negotiate. Now, of course, we can go into back of the room strategy. Um, we can go, how do you sell more at the back of the room? You can negotiate your sales table, which I don't think you negotiate that. You automatically get that. Like, I don't even know why people negotiate that. That is in my contract. That's going to happen. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that we could talk about. Back of the room strategy. How do you make more money from the back of the room than you're making on the stage? Um, how do you um, leverage more breakout sessions to get paid more? How do you tell them to ch jump the chocolate fountain so they can pay your fee? Um, there is a list of other things that you can do. But what it really comes down to is this. If you don't recognize the value of what you're delivering at all, it is a psychological number. It is a psychological number. Now, I will tell you, I will give you the details. I will tell you my trial and error story. Anyway, if you are not good with money, for example, if the fee $10,000 truly makes you uncomfortable and you think $10,000 is too big for what you want, you're not going to make the money. You're, you're not because you can't justify it. When people say, how do you charge $20,000? I'm like, oh, that's easy. Because from the time people walk out, get up from their chair, before they get up from their chair, they're already figuring out how to leverage what I just told them on stage to make money. All right. So if you do the 6%, if you do 5% or 10%, people don't hear you. Those numbers, they don't remember those numbers. 5, 10, 15 are not memorable numbers. People will generally mix them up. Um, I, so I played with 7, 8, 9, clearly. I played with 6, 7, 8, and 9, I should say. Um, I started at the lowest number. So I started at 6%. 90% to date, a little more than 90% of all my engagements, of all of them, take the 6% deal. A 7% is a number also that's not memorable. 8%, I know it's going to sound weird. 8 and 8% 8 does not, people don't remember it. And 9% is too cliche. So 6% is that number. And so if you do 6%, if you, if you reserve the date in full for the, within the next 7 days, I, you will earn a 6% discount off my fee. And it's not off my travel, it's not off my books, it's not off all my other things, it's off my fee. I will tell you that people have rushed to get it. Now, for a $20,000 speaker, that's 1200 bucks. But what that means is I have $20,000 less $1,200 in my account in less than a week. And people rush to do it. I also make sure that they have my agreement in hand and it says it in the agreement. So they're crystal clear about it. Here's the biggest benefit. There are some organizations that are required, required to actually take the, the discount. 
And so you have a lot of organizations, especially associations that are going, I have to take the discount. Here's the other thing. I sell it to them also as a huge benefit of now we don't have to do all the paperwork and we're done with all that stuff and we just got this out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and buy my tickets right now. We can just get this taken care of. Um, those things really make a huge difference. So those are some of the things, the reason FON, hashtag FON is such an ass kicker is because people can't do it. They are afraid to do it. And then they don't know how to do it. We actually teach you how to do it. We teach you how to do it from the beginning to the end. So that way, when you are a part of the high profit zone family and you call me and go, listen, I have this agreement that I'm working on right now. And I think it would be really helpful. Can you give me some ways to negotiate? We come up with fantastic things that we can add in and take out so that you can negotiate. But if you have a fear of nego negotiating in the first place, you're literally taking whatever money they throw at you. Quite on honestly, you're, you're really no different than, than a pole dancer. <laughs> you're working the pole and just like, and you're like, thank you. Thank you for that. Is that a dollar? Thank you. Is that Canadian money? Like you're taking whatever they throw up at you, right? But when you don't have a fear of negotiation, you're really willing to get in there and go, okay, how do I do this? How do I leverage this opportunity to make more money? And by the way, even when people give me my fee, I still negotiate. I do. I negotiate for more money. Do you have a breakout session? What is the full amount of your speaker budget? How many of those sessions can I take up? Are you kidding me? I do the whole thing. Anyway, if you're ready to get in the High Profit Zone program, if you're like, damn, Donna come on here every day and she dropped knowledge. You guys are just getting a little bit. <laughs> hey, I got a picture of you, Chris, and I mean, you're probably you're probably making pretty good money on that poll. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> By the way, Chris is a High Profit Zone family member, so y'all know if I'm giving him shit, he's a High Profit Zone family member. Will they answer that? Will they answer when they have offered me my fee and and I and I negotiate? Or will they answer what's your full speaker budget? Oh, all the time. Because I'll say, so what's your full speaker budget? I know you have a keynote budget and you have a breakout session budget. They don't have to give me the dollar amount. I can usually derive the dollar amount, right? They'll say, well, for our keynote speaker, we put aside 20. And then for our breakout session, you know, we put like $5,000 for a speaker, right? So they, <laughs> so they, um, they will, I can derive it from that. I can go, okay, so you got 30 breakout speakers at $5,000 each and you got two keynote speakers and you got three general session speakers. Like I can usually get a derivative. I know what that number is approximately, but all I really care about is this. Listen, I can be your opening keynote speaker. I can tie up your three day event as a closing keynote speaker. And usually once I go on stage, People want a deeper dive. So why don't I be your opening keynote speaker, your closing keynote speaker, and a breakout speaker? So, and I said, and here's your biggest benefit of doing that. The biggest benefit of having me as your opening, your closing, number one, because it wraps it up, because I'm gonna open it with fire and I'm gonna close it with a bang. And having me as your breakout session, here's the reason that, here's the biggest benefit for doing that. If you do that, then at the end of the day, you are not buying three tickets for travel. You're buying one. You're not tracking down three speakers. You're doing one. You're not paying for three contracts. You're paying for one. So I'm actually going to reduce the amount of work that you do. It's going to be one payment. We're going to do that in seven days. You're going to get it done and we're going to get it done. It's one contract. It's one hotel stay. It's one speaker. It's one transportation. That's it. I'm going to come in two days early because worst case scenario, I can get in my car and I can drive anywhere in the United States in a couple of days. Um, I can get to anywhere in the United States in a couple of days if shit gets real. So I make sure that I negotiate more than what my fee is all the time. And I do explain all of that. I do let them know that they are going to get all of this benefit. You're not paying for this. You're not paying for this. You're not paying for this. You're not paying for that. Plus at the end of the day, I don't know if anyone told you, I'm pretty awesome to work with. And so you're going to love me. And so then you got that. And then on the last day, we're going to go out. We're going to... I'm going to get you extremely drunk. We're going to take great pictures. I can blackmail you later. It's going to be awesome. So let's make that happen. Let's have a good time and fun. Right? So, so I do. I definitely make sure that I explain the whole thing. But you, if you're afraid to negotiate, if you really have a fear of negotiation, then you're not going to go into negotiation strong 
And usually people have that fear because they don't see their value. They don't know what they can negotiate and they don't even know that they're allowed to negotiate. So hopefully fear of negotiation will not cause you to get yet another chicken dinner. And hopefully if you're lucky, a $500 check. All right. You're ready to get in for a high profit zone because I think we only have like two more spaces left and I have five or six more sales calls this week. So it's probably going to get filled up. Maybe. I don't know. If you're listening and you're one of the people for this week, I'm going to tell you right now, I think you're a little sketchy. Um, so <laughs> just kidding. You're not that sketchy. Um, if you're ready to get in a high profit zone 10 week program, that is happening. Um, we're taking people in right now. We've had people who've already started. So, I mean, don't worry. They're just early birds. If you are interested, however, in the first quarter of 2020, we also have upcoming the $2,000 deep dive boot camp programs. We're getting ready to put that online so people can see them. They are going to be serious deep dive boot camps. So you can have conversations like this. We're going to talk about sales and negotiations in a deep way. Everything you wanted to know about the speaker business, but you were afraid to ask all the way from how do you identify your expertise out to how much do you charge? Um, we're actually going to do a tech class once where we're going to show people how to do some of the basics that they need in WordPress and that type of thing where they can actually create a superstar, amazing website. Like literally they can create an amazing website while they're there in a couple of days without having to pay somebody, whatever. $2,000. Uh, no, no, no. The $2,000 bootcamp is going to be in person. I've had some people who've requested that I do it on Zoom as well. If I have a special request of people who want it on Zoom, I will do a special request. I'll even give them a special price. No, this is actually in person in Orlando. I'm doing six, six, six. I'm doing six different classes at the beginning. At the first quarter of 2020, there will be two classes per month. You could pick which one or two. There'll be a discount if you take more classes. Anyway, that's all going to be on the website. <laughs> I know. And if you're a high profit zone family member, of course you get that deep ass discount because family anyway, but yeah, that's coming up at the first quarter of 2020. So there's two things for you guys to get in on. I'm really trying to make this where it's affordable based on where you are. So if you're just starting out and the high profit zone, $7,500 program is just way too expensive for you. That's not a problem. We have lower price programs that you can get in on. And for those of you who want it on Zoom, you know what? Send me a message and, you know, I'll, I will find a way to design that class and make sure that it happens on people who want it on Zoom. Maybe what I'll do is if you want it on Zoom and you want it earlier, we'll just do it earlier. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. I absolutely love you guys. I will see you tomorrow. And if there's a topic, if there's a question you have and you're like, I'm going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to be like, this person asked this idiotic question. I would never do that. That's not how I roll. If there's a question that you have, if there's something you want to know, please, please, please ask me the question. This is my life's work is to help people really understand how they can go, how they can get financial freedom from corporate colonization so that they can really change their life and live the life that they've always wanted right? That's kind of the goal, right? Remember, I was homeless when I was 19. Somebody gave me a shot. Anyway, highprofitzone.com, coffeewith.donna.com. Get on my calendar. Let me help you. Let's turn your expertise into a high profit business. Hey, Chris, I love you. Mwah. Love my family, by the way. I do. I love my family and I love them because I handpicked them, but I love my family. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great one.